I appreciate y'all. So good to be here. BYU country. Oh, isn't that right? Huh? I'm a big football fan, right? I'm an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle. I got to put, 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 I got to, all my family's Alabama. I actually come from a long line of disabilities because I stutter. My father was blind and my mother and brother are Alabama fans. So, uh, <laughs> Man, it's been tough. It's been tough. And my daddy really was blind. That's a true story. Uh, uh, my parents divorced when I was two. He moved to a different town. Every year at Christmas, my mother would give me $20 to go buy my blind Alabama fan father a Christmas present. And I remember going down to this store, and I bought him this awesome Auburn sweatshirt. <laughs> and he wore that thing around for three weeks saying, Roll Tide! <laughs> Oh, I ought to be ashamed of myself, but I'm not, 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 not whatsoever. But it's cool being here because, I mean, you guys have a great history. And I was a little boy. I love me some Steve Young, man. I mean, I love, you know. Auburn had the great running backs like B -B 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 Bo Jackson, and he was like me because he stuttered. It was so good. I'm like, Bo stutters. And then two years before that, Herschel Walker was at Georgia, and he stuttered. I'm like, well, obviously, if you stutter, you're going to be a football player. <laughs> So I was the starting quarterback for my Opelika Junior High School football team in 1985, and I'll never forget the first game of the year. We were down by five. We had all three timeouts left, but I knew that I was going to be able to drive my team down for that winning score, and they were going to carry me off the field like Rudy. It was going to be the best thing ever. I'm like, yeah, man. I remember I, I got behind my center, and, 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 and they called me for delay a game. Uh, <laughs> So they backed us up five yards. I got behind him again, and I, did, and I dropped out of the pass, and I hit my best friend, Adrian, still my best friend to the day, hit him over the middle for a 14-yard gain. I ran up to the referee, I said, time out, time out, time out. Ah, time out. He charges with all three timeouts. <laughs> we lost the game. <laughs> That was my first and last start, but uh, that's okay. I wasn't me meant to be a football player, but 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 it, it's all cool. I, I, I need to l l let you know right off the bat that this stutter is 100% real, but for some of the storytelling purposes, I do fake the stutter. So I'm about to say, he doesn't really stutter. Trust me. My mama says, Jody, we'll never forget your first word. Yeah, we don't know what in the world you said, <laughs> but had about 12 syllables. We thought you were going to be a genius or something. <laughs> try to bring awareness to stuttering through humor. That's what, and one of the biggest pet peeves for people who stutter is when people want to finish our sentences for us. And a lot of times I don't care, but sometimes I do care. I was flying out to Las Vegas for a gig a, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, and I was sitting next to a sweet lady, and she wasn't trying to be ugly. She just didn't know any better. But she asked me, she said, so where are you staying? I said, I'm staying at the mm, mm. She said, MGM? I said, no ma'am, no ma'am. I said, I'm saying that to mm, mm. She said, Mirage? I said, no, ma'am, not there either. I said, I'm saying that to mm, mm. She said, Monte Carlo? I said, lady, this ain't named that tune. You ain't gonna win nothing. <laughs> I'm staying at the Bellagio. <laughs> I was really staying at Mandalay Bay, but <laughs> she didn't need to know all that stuff, but uh. I love Stutter, man. I've been blessed to, to, to be published by Chicken Soup for the Soul eight times. And one of my, my stories in a book is called Embracing My Uniqueness. And, you know, we all have some type of, un, of uniqueness that, 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 that some people may see it as a flaw, but you got to take it and grab it and make it your own because there's a silver lining to everything. Grew up really, really poor. And, 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 and every year at Christmas in my hometown, True story, Santa Claus would set up a trailer at the local shopping center. I thought everybody lived in trailers, why not Santa Claus? You know? It's had a lot of insulation in there, but behind the, the wood paneling walls and the green shag carpet from the late 70s. And I remember my mama dropped me and my brother off, and I guess we caught Santa Claus off guard because when I opened up the door to the trailer, he had his beard down smoking a Lucky Strike. <laughs> And he said, look, uh, look, uh, he stuttered too. Uh, 
He said, little boy, what do you want for Christmas? I said, Santa, let me get, let me get a skate, 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 skateboard. So I ran the Christmas morning, had eight skateboards under the tree. <laughs> Best Christmas of all time right there. No doubt about it. But, but I mean, but, but I, mean I, I, you know, I have my challenges. Uh, 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 when I travel, I like to eat. Like I've, I've eaten in some good places here. But when I'm on the highway, I, I don't know why. I like to get a fish sandwich from McDonald's, right? Now, I have trouble. Uh, it can be any letter in the alphabet, but it's usually F words and S words, but I am a clean comedian. Uh, <laughs> always a clean comedian, but F words and S words really get me really bad. Uh, uh, but when I travel, I like to get a fish sandwich from McDonald's. I don't know why. They're disgusting, they're greasy. Sometimes it's got that hard little, little bouncy thing, in, you know, you know? <laughs> I probably have four or five of them on my floorboard now. <laughs> Nevertheless, I go there. And, 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 and y'all, I can stand right here in front of y'all this evening and I can say fish sandwich, fish sandwich, fish sandwich, fish sandwich, fish sandwich, fish sandwich. But you put me at that drive through window, there's gonna be a line, I can assure you. <laughs> Because I pulled up to the, I was in Aurora, Colorado a couple weeks ago, and I pulled up to the drive through window there, and the girl's like, can I take your order? I said, yes, ma'am, let me have a f She said, excuse me? I said, yes, ma'am, let me have one She said, you're going to have to repeat that. I said, I'm trying. I said, yes, ma'am, let me have one Chicken sandwich, please hold the mayo. And you think they mess up your order at the drive-thru? I get like six orders of fries. I said, ma'am, I did not order six orders of fries. She said, right here on the receipt, fry, 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 fry. I said, well, that's only five. <laughs> so it's got the challenges there. I, I never knew what I was going to do in life. My father uh, was a barber. Uh, <laughs> Y'all are good listeners. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Before he lost his eyesight. <laughs> I, 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 that's really cool. I'm glad you... Y'all are a smart crowd. I can, I can appreciate that. My mother uh, worked in a box factory for 37 years. I love her. She, she, she's still here. She missed work one day the whole time I lived under her r roof. And it's like, so it's a gr gr great family. And, 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 and my father, he taught me to ride a bicycle. You know, he was blind, but he, he, he still did the things that the father would do. He taught me to r r r ride a bicycle. But let me just tell you, when you cross a blind father, a stuttering kid, and bicycle lessons, <laughs> bad things are bound to happen. <laughs> Cause I remember he 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 had his hand on the back seat here, had his other hand on the handlebar here, and he's pushing me just as fast as as, as he can. But before I could get out the word stop, I was face first in the sticker bushes. But, uh, <laughs> but the good thing about that is that I learned to ride that bike real fast. <laughs> knew what I was going to do when I was a little uh, 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 f uh, uh, 15 years old. I started working at a little grocery store. Then when I was 16, I hit the big time, y'all. I started working at Kroger. Big time. <laughs> and I was actually in a little drugstore. We had the Kroger drugstore here. Then there was a solid wall. Then on this side of here, you had the big Kroger. And we got a brand new Kroger on the other side of town now. And, and I was actually riding by there the other day with, with my best friend Adrian, the guy through that, that, that pass to, and we're riding down the road, and I'm over there, he's driving, and, and, and I'm playing on my phone, whatever I'm d d d doing here, and, and, and he said, Jody, I said, what's up? He said, do you think that car in front of us drove all the way up here from Ecuador? I said, what are you talking about? He said, you, you, you see the tag? It says Ecuador. And we got to the traffic light, and I looked real hard, and I said, dude, that says educator. <laughs> so, obviously, he did not have that tag on his car. 
we were by the new, but I worked at the old Kroger and I was at the little drugstore. And I love people. I, 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 I love people. I love customers and, and th they knew me and I knew them. But we're in the little drugstore. So we had the cash register here and we had a counter over here. And, 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 and a lot of things were behind the counter, uh, like perfume and, and film and batteries, things that had a habit of walking out of the store we had to keep behind the counter. So I'm running the cash register one day and there's a sweet old lady at the end of the counter. And she's down there spraying cologne and perfume with both hands. She's got a big mist above her head like Los Angeles. And, and I said, I said, ma'am, can I help you? She said, yes, sir. I'm looking for some perfume that I saw last week, but now I can't find it. I said, okay, do you remember what it was called? She said, yes, sir. It was called Tester. <laughs> you the big bottle or the little bottle? <laughs> I have been a variety of colors too. Uh, but I, 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 I love my customers. This one here, I, 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 I'm convinced y'all are going to get it. I usually preface it by saying half of you are going to get it right now. The other half of you may get it tomorrow after lunch. But y'all are a smart crowd. There's some places I go to, like, but, but I, I, I trust. So a guy, he, he comes in, he's coughing, sneezing, head hurts, nose stopped up, you name it, he's got it. But the thing is, he, 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 he told me he only had $2 to his name and he could not sleep. That was his biggest issue there. $2 to his name and he could not sleep. So I go to the back and I showed him Kroger's version of NyQuil called Nighttime. That's key. Kroger's version of NyQuil is called Nighttime. And it was $1.79 plus tax back in the day. So I go back there and I show it to him called Nighttime. And he immediately looked at it and said, Oh, man. I said, what's up? He said, I can't take this. I said, why not? He said, man, I work third shift. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get it later on. <laughs> That's my favorite. Now, 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 there was another guy that, that came into the store one day, and, and he, too, had a speech impediment, and he became a great friend of mine, and he has given me the express written consent to tell this story all the, all the time. So I don't want anybody to think I'm making fun of, the, of, of this guy, but, but he had a speech impediment, too. And he's down at the end of the perfume and cologne counter, and he's stretching as far as he can. He can almost reach what he's trying to get, but he's coming up a little bit short. And I said, sir, can I help you? He said, yeah, let me have a a bottle of your old pice. <laughs> I said, do what? He said, let me have a bottle of your old pice right there in the red bottle. I said, oh, old spice. He said, yeah, I have trouble with my S words. I'm like, I do too, brother. I got you. So I reached back there and I picked up the only thing of old spice cologne that we had. And he looked at it and said, hmm. I said, what is it? He said, uh, this is the prion. Do you have the plash on? <laughs> I said, do what? He said, this is the prey on. Do you have the plash on? Because I like to plash it on my kin. <laughs> I'm like, and they don't mind? <laughs> do you go to family reunions? Like, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> know where you are this weekend. <laughs> I said, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. All I have, all I have, all I have is, uh, 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 it, 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 it is the prey on. So <laughs> he said, well, do you have the old Pice deodorant? I said, yes, sir, we do. It's on the back wall. So I went all the way to the back wall of Kroger, picked up the only thing, because again, this is just the little drugstore, the only thing of old Spice deodorant that we had, and he looked at it and said, Hmm. I said, what is it? He said, uh, this is the tick. Do you have the roll on? <laughs> I said, no, sir. All I have is a tick. <laughs> then he said, well, I don't like the tick called a tick get tucked to your hair. <laughs> and it does get tucked. <laughs> it's like Christmas lights. <laughs> Oh, man. I love working there. Uh, uh, I remember one cold December night in Alabama. Cold. It, it was like 50. And uh, <laughs> almost Christmas 
Lady comes there and says, young man. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, where are your ointments? So I took her back and I showed her the creams, the sads, the liniments. She said, no, silly, your Christmas ointments. <laughs> I love it. One of my favorite stories, a sweet old lady came into the store one night, and I had known her my whole life. She lived up the road from me when I was a kid, named Miss Helen. And Miss Helen had been a widow for about 10 years. She came to the store one night looking just, just gorgeous, had her hair all fixed up, looked very nice. And I said, Miss Helen, what's the occasion? You know, you look great. She said, Jody, I'm looking for a man. <laughs> so I took a step backwards. And, uh, <laughs> I said, Miss Helen, what kind of man are you looking for? She said, Jody, I'm not looking for a man with good looks. I said, well, that's good, Miss Helen. What kind of man are you looking for? She said, Jody, I'm not looking for a, a man with money. I said, well, that's good, Miss Helen. What kind of man are you looking for? She said, Jody, I'm looking for a man who can drive at night. <laughs> you get a little bit older, you know. <laughs> I speak to all kind of groups and stuff, and I was speaking to some, some uh, school employees, and uh, there was uh, about 19 ladies and one gentleman in the crowd. I told that story, got a good chuckle, and this guy was probably late 50s, early 60s, got a chuckle, then it got all quiet. All of a sudden, this guy leaned back in his chair, slipped off his glasses, looked around and said, I can drive at night. <laughs> Like, that's, that's, that's my guy right there. That's who I want to be one day. But, uh, man, but I love working there. Again, so, 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 so many great people. Uh, uh, about halfway through my time working there, they actually knocked a hole in the wall where you could go over into the big Kroger. So a guy comes in there when I said, Jody, where do you keep your plums? So I went over there to the hole in the wall, and I pointed to where it is in basically every grocery store in America. I said, man, halfway down that wall, you cannot miss this right there. And he walks over there, and he's just all over him. Just, I'm like, just stop, and stop. Just, and he never did. So I got somebody to watch my cash register, and I ran over there as fast as I could. I said, dude, dude, the, the plums are right here. He said, no, man, not them kind of plums. I'm talking about what you plumb your toilet with. <laughs> but the thing is, he spent 10 minutes looking at the monks of squash and cucumbers and carrots. <laughs> like, you would have seen the stick picking up, man. You know, sometimes I say things that just makes me feel not so smart, but I was not prepared. Uh, uh, my mother never prepped me for this question. My father passed away when I was eight years old, so he, he didn't prepare, and I just had no idea. So I'm working in the store one, one Sunday afternoon, 16 years old. Lady comes into the store. She says, young man. I said, yes, ma'am. How can I help you? She said, where are your feminine napkins? <laughs> So I took her back to the paper towel aisle. <laughs> I said, I think these are real pretty. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Learned a lot that day. <laughs> Oh, man, I love working there. Man, man, it, it, it's important to listen to people. You know, it's the polite and courteous thing to do. Number two, you may learn something. And number three, they may say something funny. But number four, it could prevent you from getting your hind end whooped. Because a guy comes to the store, and he's about six foot nine, 300 pounds, look like Hulk Hogan or somebody, big old scary monster of a man. And I'm so thankful that I listened. I listened, I listened, I listened. Because before I said anything, he started talking and he asked me, he asked me now, whoa, 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 that's him, not me. He says, where, wh uh, where, uh, 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 where are your Q-tips? So I said, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I, I didn't talk for two days. <laughs> he could have been lurking or something. But uh, 
I enjoyed that. I knew I needed to do something else. And wound up going into the Army shortly after high school. Uh, tried going to college for one quarter, but it just did not work out. You heard me say Hulk Hogan. I've always been a huge wrestling fan. I know it's fake, but I've always loved it. But, 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 but that first quarter in college, that first quarter in college, I took three classes. I withdrew from the first two, and I failed the other one. <laughs> But the cool thing is that when I got back my grades, I made a WWF. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but I knew I needed to do something and, and, and I wound up going into the army and when I was a young enlisted soldier, I was a, an army medic, was stationed in Germany for two years at a place called Lonstuhl, big hospital over there. Then I was stationed at Fort Sill, Oklahoma for a couple of years too. And, and I, I, I loved it out there. I love my people, I love serving. Uh, couldn't help but laugh though at all the sergeants that I served with uh, uh, who could not spell the word sergeant. Uh, you see it's spelled S-A-R-G-E-N-T, S-E-A-R-G. I'm like, how in the world can you not spell your own rank? Until I became a lieutenant. That's why we go by LT. <laughs> but I remember, I, I never went to the field one time when I was in Germany. Then I got to Fort Sill, Oklahoma, and we stayed in the field all the time. It's really cold and wet and rainy and miserable there. They carried me to the field. I was not prepared. My feet were like blocks of ice. I wanted to cry. And, and my sergeant, Sergeant Garza, who's still a dear friend of mine to this day, he said, Fuller, next time we come out here, you go to the PX and you get you some pantyhose and you put those on and that will keep your feet warmer and you can thank me later. You can thank me later. I said, Roger that, Sergeant. Whoa. So I did. We got back. I went to the PX. I got me some, some, some pantyhose. Got me some knee highs. Uh, I got some sandal feet for the summer. I mean, I was set for the year. Year. However, somewhere he told me I was supposed to wear those pantyhose in conjunction with, reg with regular socks. Somehow I missed that. Because there I was running around the woods of Fort Sill, Oklahoma in combat boots and pantyhose. And not only were my feet colder, but I had blisters and I had a run in my hose. I went to Iraq three times uh, after 9-11, and uh, uh, we had so much support from back home. Uh, I've got some letters that I'd like to share with y'all. These came from some uh, kids, and uh, uh, this is exactly the way they came. And uh, I've got to wear my glasses now because I can't read without them. Uh, uh, I had to actually wear glasses in the first grade, even though my vision was perfect. Uh, I went to the eye doctor and he was very impatient because he sat me in the chair and asked me to read that first letter on the bottom. And I got stuck on that E. <laughs> he said, give him some glasses. So I wore them for three years. So it's one of the bad things about stuttering there. But uh, these are exactly the way they came. And uh, uh, some are funny, some are sweet. Some are like, what? Because they're kids. And you, just, you really never know what kids are, are going to say. But uh, the first one comes from Margaret. And Margaret says, I hope you have good luck when you fight. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so I don't have anything to fight about. <laughs> if life were so simple. Now here's Cody, he's a very inquisitive young man, and here's a little stuttering awareness for you. I don't stutter when I read, it's just one of the weird things about stuttering. So Cody asks, <clears throat> do you have any kids? What do you eat? Are you a man or a woman? What do you rank? Do you play football? Do you sleep in a tent? Does anyone have a Porsche? <laughs> no Porsches in Iraq. You know, this comes from Ryan, who's a very optimistic young man. He says, we are so glad we have such a good army. I hope we win the war in Iraq. If we don't, it's okay, because I know we will win the next war. <laughs> Anybody in here uh, serve in the Air Force? Any Air Force? Any Air Force? It's okay. I mean, it's okay. But... <laughs> I get it, but it's okay. Okay, usually there's Air Force people. So, 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 so I've been on the search. These letters came in 2000, 2007. So uh, I've been on the search for a long time. This comes from a young man named Corey. Corey says, I'm in the fifth grade. If you're in the Air Force, do you know my second cousin, Bucko Jackson? <laughs> the search continues. 
Now, this is going to make sense in the long run. I need you to play along because I promise you it will make sense in the long run. So if you play along, it'll, it, it will make sense. So Jessica says, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo. Why are you crying? <laughs> it's a kid. It's going to make sense, I promise. So then Landon says, what's up? How are you? My name's Landon Smith. I'm a boy. I hope you didn't think I was a girl. <laughs> I wrote him back and said, my name's Jody. <laughs> he wrote me back, are you a girl? <laughs> Hi, Captain Fuller. My name's Brianna. What's yours? <laughs> Hi, Captain Fuller. Thank you for fighting in Iraq. What type of gun are you using? Captain Fuller, did you fight in World War II? Then Nikki says, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. 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 Why you crying? <laughs> it's going to make sense. And then Callie, you can tell Callie's just a southern little sassy girl because she says, well, I heard you were a comedian. Well, I have a crazy cat. one thing to write to a soldier 7,000 miles away, <laughs> but you know, I still appreciate it. Which let me tell you while I'm here, because y'all are new people, uh, I got a crazy cat to a home that I acquired a couple months ago, and uh, she's still free to a good home. Uh, <laughs> three tours in Iraq and I'm fine. I had to ride in a car a half hour with that cat, and I like to lost my mind. <laughs> y'all ever been in a car with a cat? It is the worst thing ever. The cat the whole time was <laughs> all frothy at the mouth and stinking and smelling. So, so, so I rolled the window down as far as it would go. I have an old car. I, I rolled the window down <laughs> as far as it would go. And, and it was still wow, 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 wow. So, so then I, uh, so, so then I turned the radio up as loud as it would go. But when I did, Taylor Swift was playing, so I turned it back off and listened to the cat. <laughs> I gotta be so mean. <laughs> I think Taylor's awesome. This is my 13 year old. She's made me listen to it so many times. So I was like, look what you made me do. So uh, <laughs> I know these things, right? I love having girls. I'm, I'm the only, I'm the only guy. So it's, it, it's, 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 it's fun sometimes. Uh, so Cody says, in science this week, we're talking about the human body. And I hope your human body doesn't get shot, but I got homework to do. <laughs> Then Seth says, knock, knock. Who's there? Boo. 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 Why you crying? <laughs> ha, 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 ha. I made that up. <laughs> Maybe you can use it in a show one day. <laughs> and I did right here in Provo, Utah. <laughs> glass of cool. My wife wears glasses because she can't see. I only wear them to, to read, but uh, we're the kind of people, I don't know if y'all do it out here. I don't, do y'all have turtles in Utah? Yeah, turtles? I don't, I don't know. We have turtles all in Alabama. It's all, so, so, so we, we're the people that always stop in the middle of the road and we stop, we get out, and we help the turtle cross the road in the direction in which it was headed. And, and, and I usually drive, so it's fine, but I was having a headache one day since so my wife was driving. So, so we're flying down the road. All of a sudden, she slams on the brakes, and she turns around like the Duke boys and goes flying back. I said, what is it? She said, it's a turtle, it's a turtle, it's a turtle. Right? And we get to it. She said, oh, my goodness, it's just a baby. I said, baby, that's a pine cone. <laughs> and she still got out and moved it across the road. <laughs> I loved it, though. After 9-11, I went to Officer Candidate School, uh, 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 see, Officer Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia, and uh, 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 I got cut commissioned January of 2003, wound up at Fort Lewis, Washington, deployed with the greatest men and women in the world, 2003-2004. I was the platoon leader of the third largest platoon in the entire United States Army. Just, I love them. I still love them so very much. But we used to run convoys all the time. And at that time, only the convoy commander
commander would have the fancy navigational gear in his or her vehicles. I had it in mind. My sergeant was in the lead vehicle with a strip map drawn out, so he knew we were getting close. We were going up to from where we were up in Mosul down to this place called QS, and we're going down the road, and my sergeant called him up on the radio. He says, sir, you got to let me know where to turn. I said, roger that, sergeant. I sure will. So I start putting everything in on my GPS, and I get it up and everything. Then I get back on the radio. I said, all right, sergeant, here's what you need to do. Uh, you, uh, uh, you need to take uh, uh, take take uh, uh, take uh, take, uh, uh, take a left. He said, where at? I said, about a half a click back. <laughs> we blew right past that thing. But it was so great, the support that we had from back home, being able to go on R&R &R to just having that break. All three times I went to Iraq, went back to Germany for R&R. &R. And the first time I was working so many hours a day, I just went down to Bavaria. I spent the whole time down there. I'll never forget, there's an American family there. And, and, and the mother was taking a picture of her husband and two kids. And I'm thinking to myself, you need to be in the picture with your family. That's very, very important. And Porter. So I walked over there and I asked her if she would like for me to, to take the picture. And I guess I was stuttering pretty bad. I don't hear it the majority of the time. I've been doing it for 47 years. And, and, and But she looked at me kind of funny. But, but she said, okay. So, so she handed me her camera. I took the picture. And when I did, uh, 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 she came to get it back. And I handed her the camera. And she squeezed my hand and said, you speak very good English. <laughs> I said, well, thank you. I'm from Alabama. I don't hear that a whole lot. <laughs> but the support we had from back home just meant all the difference in the world. You know, it's easier to do your job when people love you and support you and respect you. My grandmother was one of our greatest supporters. She would send all kind of care packages. Sometimes it didn't make a whole lot of sense at the time. But in 0304, the mail would take about a month to get there and the PX truck would show up and it would run out of stuff just like that. Uh, 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 one of the tricks of the trade that you do in that type of, of weather, 125 degrees in the summer, is you get baby powder and you put it in every nook and cranny in your body. You help to absorb all the moisture and it just makes for a much more pleasant day in that type of environment. Well, I woke up one day, 125 degrees, and I was out of baby powder. But then I remember my awesome, wonderful grandmother from Tallapoosa County in Alabama, a great Southern lady, in a care package for some unknown reason. She had sent me a five pound bag of self-rising flour. <laughs> So me being the sharp lieutenant that I was, <laughs> I got that self-rising flower. I put it in every nook and cranny on my body and I was good to go. It was self-rising and tingly. Then we wound up going in an emergency convoy that day. We're going about four hours down the road. We drop our load. We do a turn and burn. We get on back to Mosul. And by the time I get back, I am worn out. I'm tired. So I go back to my hooch. I pull off my Kevlar. I pull off my flat vest. I pulled off my shirt. And when I pulled off my T-shirt, two biscuits fell out. <laughs> Grandmama knew what she was doing. <laughs> I want to thank y'all so much for, for making this. It's awesome.